We're talking about nearest neighbor and sorted edges that we've been working with for the last couple of weeks. So first thing on my list is, is how they are alike. You guys help me out. It, how, are, how are these two alike? Sorted edges and nearest neighbor. Yeah, they both start and end at the same vertex. And uh, so we're on page 21, Terrell. So they both start and end at the same vertex. And what did we call this when, we, when, when your graph starts and ends at the same vertex? What do you guys remember? Yeah, it's called a circuit. Okay, well, it's, it's late right now, so um, we're not spending any time in class working on it. We're doing notes. We're finishing this unit, sir. Okay, we've done five days on that, so you, you had a week. So, do um, you have excused absences, sir? When, when the graph starts and ends at the same vertex, this is called a circuit. This is called a circuit. So they both also focus on, on vertices. Both, both nearest neighbor and sorted edges, they focus on the vertices. This is page 21 in your workbook. And if you remember, I called these greedy algorithms. We called these greedy. And and greedy algorithms is focused on on the cheapest cost. <laughs> Excuse me. And they both, <clears throat> they both visit every vertex exactly once. Without it, you, you cannot repeat vertices with either of these algorithms. All right. So now I'm going to move on to how are they different? How are nearest neighbor and sorted edges different? Well, nearest neighbor, you've got a starting home vertex that we, we start at. So you start your circuit at a home vertex. Okay, and for sorted edges, we're not really concerned about where we start. We, we, say, we say the problem states name your minimum cost Hamiltonian circuit starting at vertex such and such. We're not worried about where we start and end. I should say what vertex, I'm sorry. Not worried about what vertex to start at. So we're just going to name the vertex, name the circuit starting at a certain vertex, is how the 
problems have been worded. Um, I'm going to use a word you maybe have not heard. How are they different? Well, nearest neighbor is contiguous. You guys ever heard that word? Contiguous. That means uh, you kind of build it by step by step or edge by edge. I should probably put edge by edge. And nearest neighbor, that graph is always connected. When I say always connected, I mean that it's, you can see where you started. You can trace back through the graph where you started it and when, what vertex it was. All right? And I should put the next edge. The next edge. We're at a, we're at a vertex. Because we really do. We look at the cheapest, vert cheapest edge from where we're at. And whatever's the cheapest is going to be, now you're in trouble. Now you're in trouble, Miss Price. You want to come in, those two? All right. So we look at the, the edge from the vertex we were at, and we pick the cheapest. We pick the cheapest, and this is contiguous. It's always connected. It's always connected. So, so know that sorted edges, it's not always connected. We don't always have a connected solution as we're going through the process. The, the solution that we come up with at the end is connected. And we have a, 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 a circuit, a, a round trip through the graph. But sometimes when we're building it, it doesn't look connected. It's a disconnected graph. All right, questions on this? And I guess the last thing I should put in is that we... Uh, we look at the whole graph. And we list the cheapest edges. So we're not limited to the vertex where we're at when we're doing sorted edges. We look at the whole graph and we identify and list, make a list or highlight the cheapest edges in that whole graph because that's, we're focused on cheapest cost on both of these. The strategy is just slightly different from each other. So right now this thing is 35 seconds behind. So I'll let you guys catch up. And then we're gonna talk about the next thing. We're gonna talk about the next unit in this chapter in this unit and that's section 2.4 and it's the last section we have in the book in the book okay everybody got this all right i'm going to the next page and now i'm going to page 26 guys because uh, in between here these are the problems that we've been doing some of them I worked in class, some of them I have assigned to you, but page 22, 23, 24, and 25 are all practice problems that you should all be able to work on. 
This is my next thing, page 26. We're talking about minimum cost spanning trees. We're talking about minimum cost spanning trees at the top of page 26. All right, here we go. Spanning tree. Well, first I gotta tell you what a tree is. I gotta tell you what a tree is. And I'm not talking about the tree outside my window. A tree is part of a graph that does not contain a circuit, that does not contain a circuit. Mr. Bloom. Oh, yeah, where are you? OK. Are you tech? OK. When's the play performance? So your open is tomorrow. OK. All right. Thank you. All right. So let me finish this. A tree is part of a graph that does not contain a circuit. All right. A tree is part of a graph that does not contain a circuit. Now a spanning tree A spanning tree is a tree that contains or or touches every vertex in the graph All right, so it's, right now it's, it's 30, 35 seconds behind me. It's lagging, it's my Wi-Fi. So a spanning tree, again, is a tree that contains or touches every vertex in the graph. We're on page 26, sir. Top of page 26, these notes are being taken from. All right, now I got these examples here. And they're missing the vertices. I'm just gonna draw in the vertices here. This is page 26. All right. So that first graph under example one, the one on the far left, A, that's my original graph. That is my original graph. And the routes that I'm trying to show examples of are the, are the boldened ones. I'll highlight them, I'll highlight them for you. So these edges here are the ones that are going to be looked at, okay? Um, the bold black are the ones that we're looking at. All right, so I put my vertices here. So the first one is my original graph. My first one is the original graph, okay? Um, letter B, do you guys see that those bolded edges, you see that they connect all the red vertices? The red vertices, look, the purple right here. See how they connect all the vertices in the graph. Guys, this is a spanning tree. There's no circuits there. It contains or touches every vertex in the graph, okay? 
The second one, the second one, the blue vertices with the red highlights. That is just a tree. That is just a tree. It does not contain a circuit and it doesn't visit or touch or contain all the edges in that graph. That's just a tree. That's an example of a tree. And then letter D, the one, the graph that's got the green vertices, What's wrong with that one? What does that one contain that the other ones don't? Does everyone see that it's got a circuit? Guys, this is a circuit. And because it's a circuit, it's not a spanning tree, it's not a tree. It's, it's disqualified. We, we're not looking at any circuits. We're not looking at creating any circuits when we're talking about spanning trees. And then the last one, we still have to be concerned about these type of graphs, the last ones, the ones that I got highlighted in green. What kind of graph do we have here? Yeah, it's not connected. This is a not connected or this is a disconnected graph. This is a disconnected graph, that last one, all right? So these are examples of the, the things that we talked about. Spanning tree, tree, circuit, and disconnected graph, uh, applying what we know, what we've, we're talking about in this unit. OK, so, so where's, what's my real world applications? Well, real world application would be in the delivery of utilities, your utilities like uh, electricity. Water. Gas lines. So think about this. If you guys all had a dead, a dead or low powered cell phone, all you got to do is plug into a power source, right? And if we were all sharing the same extension cord, all we got to do is all plug into that same extension cord. So if we had 24 plugins on an extension cord, we could all plug in and, and charge our phones. That would be an example of a spanning tree. Your phone would be the vertice. Your vo phone would be the vertex. So another example of a spanning tree would be a, would be your sewer line, your sewer. You're also, um, your cable TV, your cable TV, your internet, your, your, your phone, your phone lines. Those are all examples that would be a spanning tree. They're, they're delivering services to your house. They're delivering services to the address here at school, okay? Another one, another example would be an air, air, airline route, an airline route. So you have a, a, an origination city and then a destination city. And uh, yeah, that would be a tree. And if you've got a bunch of vertices on a point, you could, if, it, if that airplane or airline covers all those vertices, you could have a spanning tree. All right. Well, Kruskal's algorithm, it, this is just simply a strategy for finding the minimum cost spanning tree. So just like the greedy algorithms we were looking at for nearest neighbor and sorted edges, we are focused on, on minimum cost. We're focused on what's the cheapest. What's the cheapest? Kruskal was a was an engineer for General Electric. Anybody heard of General Electric? They were the precursor of uh, of all the electricity companies. They got broken up. They were, they had a monopoly on electrical um, generation back in the fifties, and they were they were broken up bit by bit. But this Krusko was the guy that came up with this. This is how they, they built out their, the electrical grid here in this country and in other, other countries 
using this technology. But we, we build this up just like sorted edges. We, we, we identify or we look for the cheapest edge in the graph, and then we link them up in order of cheapest to greatest till all the vertices are connected. So we look for the cheapest edges. And, we, and some of the guidelines is, is we have no circuits are allowed. We cannot have any circuits. We cannot have any circuits in a spanning tree. And we're not worried about about using all the edges. We're not worried about using all the edges. This is like now a minute behind me. I don't know if it stopped. I still am recording here. It's going, but it's, it's like my Wi-Fi gets funky. All right. So if we have two vertices, how many, how many edges do I need to connect two vertices? One. Just one, OK? What about if I have three vertices? How many edges do I need to connect three Vertices. How many edges do I have to draw up there? Does everyone see I, 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 I have to draw a two? Yeah. What, about, what about if I add a vertex? What if I have four vertices up there? How many edges do I have to draw? I have to draw one less. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how I connect them. I just need to connect one of the vertices there. All right, our first theorem down here. It's called the tree theorem. It's called the tree theorem. Any spanning tree with n vertices will contain n minus 1 edges. All that means is exactly what if you've got two vertices, well, it only takes one edge to connect them. And if you add a vertex, well, it's just going to have two edges to connect all those vertices. And if I had a fourth vertex, well, now it's only going to take three edges. So it's always n minus 1 edges to connect and create a spanning tree in that graph. OK? Make sense? All right. Wait. Give you a little more time. I'm going to do one more real world example, and then we're done for today. There's a problem on the top of page 27 I'm going to look at. There's a cable TV <clears throat> company that wants to connect cable at a large university. And it'll be set up on campus. And I've got five vertices where they want this cable TV network set up at. And you guys need to know that to link the video from like vertex A to vertex C, well, they don't have to, those vertices don't have to be directly connected. We could build links from, uh, from vertex A through B to get to C. So I'd be, I'd be going A through vertex B to, to, to deliver services to vertex C. Wow. Still a minute behind. Mm -hmm. 
I could also build services to vertex C by going through vertex E and then to vertex C. So I could do it that way too. I could go A to vertex E to vertex C. That's still also a possible solution. All right. It's it's coming. So this is this is the missing notes. So to get a video from A to C, we could build links from vertex A to B to C. Or we could also build links between A to E to C. It, it doesn't matter. All you gotta do is, is make sure Vertex C is connected to the network for them to provide service there. Make sense? All right. So now look, let's look at the solution. We're going to build a spanning tree using this strategy. Okay. All right, here we go. So I'm going to get rid of these shaded lines right now. These highlighted lines I'm going to get rid of. So now I'm going to make the graph bigger. And this is just like sorted edges. We do not have a starting vertex. I'm looking at the whole graph, and I'm trying to identify what is my cheapest edge in the graph. And my cheapest edge. Yeah, that's 0 0.5. These are in hundreds of thousands of dollars, these numbers. So 0 0.5, guys, that's half a million dollars. OK, that's half a million dollars to, to build that little line, that little edge between vertex E and D. But that is my cheapest edge right there. And so that's the one I'm going to take. I'm going to build out from E to D. What's my next cheapest? Yeah, that D to A, that 0 0.6 right next to it. That one right there. So I'm going to build that out. And then what is my next cheapest edge? Well, E to A, what does, that, what does 0 0.65 do to me? It closes. it closes it. It creates a circuit. We cannot have a circuit in spanning trees. A tree does not con contain a circuit. So that is not an option. That you cannot do. So then you look at the next one, it would be AB, that's 0 0.7. That is one that we would take. It connects B to the rest of the services. Now, the only vertex we haven't connected is this vertex C. And now, this vertex C, you look at the cheapest edge that connects them to the other vertices. So you got 1.6, you got uh, 1.3, you got 1.4, and you got 0 0.75. It doesn't work? Yeah. Well, this is, the, this is the, the rule. You can have more than two edges at a vertex. When we're talking about spanning trees, it's OK to have three edges at a vertex. So, so that is my solution. That's how it's different. Than, than sorted edges and nearest neighbor. You guys, this is important. You can have more than two edges at a vertex when we're talking about a spanning tree. So this 0 0.75, this is my third edge at vertex D. But this is my solution. So now what you do is you take these values and you add them up. So. We started what? A, B? A, B was uh, 0 0.70. Yes, it happened right there. And then we had uh, A, D, and that was 0 0.60. And then we had vertex, vertex D to E, and that was 0 0.50. And then the last one was uh, C, D. And that's 0 0.75. So we're going to add this up. 
and this is going to be my total cost. We still have total cost when we're talking about minimum cost spanning trees. So I'm going to add this up. So I got five. I got another five. Carry the two. And this is 2.55 million is my total cost. All right, questions on that? It's still, now it's 50 seconds behind me. It's 50 seconds behind me. 